video. Welcome to the first video back in the UK after our trip to Vietnam. I'm here with James. We're in the Bike Fit Studio because we're doing a brand new series of Bike Fit Tuesdays. Woohoo! It's been so long. Yeah, it's, it's been a nice, long man. time. We're going to revisit some of the old material. We're going to put a new spin on it. We're going to give you guys some more information and we're going to bring some whole whole new list of topics and we're going to start debunking a few myths that we've uh, we've come across over the in, in the industry over the years. So Without further ado, we can talk about pedals, aren't we? Like we've got a big drawer of pedals over there. What we've got here is a selection of the most common systems that we find in the, in the studio. Uh, and I guess we wanted to go through and explain the differences and the benefits and perhaps some of the pitfalls of, of, of using some of the systems. I guess if we, we kick it off with the, the guys that invented it, um, look, he's a French manufacturer. They make a, a, a number of clipless pedals. This is the Kia 2 Max, which actually in my opinion, is, this is my favorite look. Um, this tends to be the, the pedal that I sell to people who are lighter riders, smaller women. It's the easiest to, get, to engage. It's quite heavily rear weighted. So that tends to make it easier for you to come along and actually clip into the thing and engage with it a little bit better. That's fundamentally it. This is the original uh, pedal system, the original clipless pedal system which comes with three different options of float. This is one of the older versions. They've more recently moved to a, a carbon leaf spring. The benefits of the leaf spring are that it's, it's lighter. It lacks any form of uh, adjustment to the resistance. So if you don't, they, they offer several different levels of tension, but if you don't like the factory set tension, there isn't really any way of deviating from it without uh, removing the leaf spring and replacing it with a different one. There are titanium axle versions of both of them, along with a series of, uh, of steel, uh, stainless steel, carbon and plastic bodies. Next is the uh, time I click and, and actually uh, recently Mavic have brought the rights to this system so the uh, the Mavic pedal is actually exactly the same system as this. Uh, time were the very first manufacturer to develop float in pedals. Uh, back in the day when Look developed their, sy their system they were using a fixed cleat and actually that caused quite a lot of problems for, for, for riders but we'll do more on that in another video. These are really quite popular with a lot of riders because it's quite an easy system to get in and out of. There is, however, one fundamental flaw with them. They have very little, in fact, they've got virtually no adjustment for starts. So you can't move the, the cleat immediately and laterally. They are just pretty, they're pretty much set. You can reverse them to, to, to alter the stance, but it isn't really a sufficient adjustment, in my opinion, versus the, the other systems that we'll, we'll see today. As a bike fitter, I find it one of the harder systems to work with. It, it is easier to use for, from a consumer's perspective, but frankly, it's easier to use on an almost immeasurable scale versus the other systems. I actually used these for a while. And yeah, me too. If you ever have a chance to try on someone's shoe that's the right size and clip in, if you haven't tried one of these, I think you should because it's the weirdest float yeah. from a pedal system yeah, I've yeah, ever yeah. used. Pivots in a different way. It's right? really weird. Yeah, I yeah. can't even explain it. So if you ever have a chance, um, try them out. We then move on to my, my personally favorite system. I spent many years riding, riding looks, in fact, I started on Shimano. I moved to but moved to Lux because I started riding Campag on my bikes, and you can't you can't have that faux pas of riding Shimano pedals on a Campag with bike. And I recently moved back to Shimano just before our trip to America. I moved back to Shimano, and frankly, wondered what I've been doing with my life. The SPD SL uh, is without a doubt the most stable system uh, by a long, long way. It's a solid pedal. It's one. It's the most durable system. It's also probably the most common system that you'll see. The pedal I have in my hand here is a 105. This is a, uh, a carbon fiber body with a chrome early axle. It's got decent seal bearings. They start the R540, which I'm not a huge fan of. I've got to say the entry level pedal from, from Shimano, uh, the cleats actually don't fit the pedal very well. So they tend to have this notion of, of washing around or excessive float. So if you're gonna buy a Shimano pedal, my recommendation would be to start at least with the R550. It's only about 10 pound more. Maybe it might even be as little as five pounds more than the R540 um, when you when you buy them online. Moving up from there, you go to 105 Altegra and Dura Ace. Fundamentally, the, the, the engagement system is all exactly the same. They use the same cleat. Again, you've got three different options of cleat, uh, cleat float. So the, uh, the blue cleat offers two and a half, the yellow, Cleat, which offers six degrees, which is what you tend to get the, the pedals packaged in. And then they also offer the Work of the Devil red cleat, uh, which is a fixed, a fixed float. It doesn't allow any movement of the uh, of the, the shoe inside the pedal. One other variety of this system that's that really is worth noting is the SPD SLE, which is only available in Altegra and Dura Ace versions, iterations. 
but this is a long axled version of the standard pedal system. Now it's worth noting that the Dura-Ace as actually is actually a slightly shorter axle than the other four pedals. Um, so the Dura Race long axle pedal is actually still narrower than the Altegra long axle pedal. But if you have an individual that uh, has a tibial varum or is bow legged, uh, bigger riders, uh, obese riders uh, tend to benefit from the system. This is the single best selling pedal that I sell in here. Four out of five pedals that I sell are this long axle Shimano system. Moving on to what is perhaps one of my least favorite systems and that's not going to be particularly popular with um, a lot of the uh, users of Speedplay. I have started to see a correlation between this system and problems. Uh, I, I feel that they have enjoyed the, the myth that they cure knee pain for far too long. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's, it's not a bad system for the right rider. For a lighter rider, a uh, rider doesn't put out a huge amount of power, it, it, it's a good system. It's double sided, so it means easy engagement. The cleat, the, the, the bulk of the, uh, of the mechanism of the pedal is actually housed inside the cleat, so uh, it tends to be, it tends to make the bike a little bit lighter, although the cleat is heavier. Um, but mm, the issue I have with it is it's, it's, a, much, it's a significantly smaller contact patch. So, I mean, if you're looking at the, the difference between the two. And what that yields is, is a loss in stability. Uh, the other thing that we found is that the, 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 it, so the way that it engages is there is a, a C-spring that pops into these recesses in the pedal, and that, that spring tends to deteriorate at quite an alarming rate, which means that the pedal starts to develop rock and play at quite an early stage. So particularly if you're riding a lot, you might start to see that wear quite quickly. If you are a bigger rider, if you're a heavier rider, uh, if you're a more powerful rider, then if I'm honest, this pedal system probably isn't for you. If you're a lighter rider, uh, or, or particularly if you have problems with clipping in, it's a great system. You can just stamp on it and go. If you're a bigger rider, you might want to consider moving to the Shimano SPD. Aren't they really adjustable? I would question who actually needs that level of adjustment. I think some idiot once said they're a bike fitter's dream, they're a bike fitter's nightmare. You are able to very accurately pinpoint where the float is in the pedal, but to be totally honest, you, you shouldn't need to do that unless there are physiological challenges in the rider. Most people should be able to sit relatively squarely. And these, these things you can also influence quite heavily with uh, cleat location, arch support, uh, any form of wedging will also influence it. And furthermore, things like saddle height will influence how a, rider, how a rider's feet interact with their pedals. If you've got someone who sits rotated in the saddle as a result of their interaction with a bad saddle, they will sit rotated, which will mean their feet will sit like this which has led a lot of people to set the, the cleat float to allow for that, when in actuality what you should be doing is looking at what's going on elsewhere. I personally question whether you actually need that amount of adjustment, considering I have zero problems with an SPDSL. The one other pedal system, one final pedal system that we we're going to talk about today was uh, the Shimano SPD, which is a mountain bike pedal system, but with the growth we're seeing in gravel, bike, gravel, gravel riding, Three of us rode across Vietnam in these. We felt it was worth mentioning. Now, uh, this is a mountain biking pedal system. It's designed to be used in conjunction with a shoe that has a, a recessed cleat, um, which enables you to, to walk around in it. Every, every other pedal system here, uh, the, the cleat bolts to the external surface of the sole, which means you end up walking actually on the cleat. Uh, this system is... Again, it's better for mountain biking. Some elitists might say it has no place on a road bike. I would disagree. Some newer riders will really benefit from this system because you're, it'll, it'll enable you to walk around. I guess the, the, the problem with using it is that, again, it, it shares the same issues with the speed plate. It's a smaller contact patch. You get a loss of stability from that as a result, which can lead to problems further up the chain. It's fantastic for commuters, again, usually bound by the, by, by the choice of shoe. Uh, offers adjustment, double-sided entry, so again, you can just stamp on the thing. There are different models with external cages like this that offer better stability. Um, it, it's less affected by things like mud. If your shoes are jammed up with crap and mud, then actually you can just stamp on the thing and it'll go straight in. Uh, so, so yeah, it, it, it's a really good starting point. It's uh, it's incredibly durable. Again, the model I would recommend looking at would be the R5, sorry, the M540 from as a starting point. This is an M520 that I just bought for the jig, 
but the M540 offers a significant improvement in bearing quality. Again, you're just going to get you're going to get better durability, and it's going to last longer. Um, from there, you go up to XT, XTR, and so on and so forth. But yeah, well worth using. I love pedals. These are our findings. Uh, let us know if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more. If you have questions regarding pedal systems, uh, put them in the comments below. We will we'll both do our best to, to answer them. And also, if you want to know about bike fit topics, Francis and I have this morning spent the uh, you know, half the morning coming up with a list of content. It's a long list of bike fit topics that we're going to be talking about over the coming months. So if you want to know about something or something that perplexes you, just drop a comment and we'll do our best to answer it. Thanks for watching.